it's video and quotes of Sarah Palin saying our Constitution is being destroyed. We can't let Obama destroy our Constitution. We just authorized the Patriot Act, reauthorized it. And it's following everything Bush did and more. And she said, yes, if we give these Muslim extremists a fair trial, that destroys our Constitution. No, that upholds it. If you've got the proof they're these terrorists, but no, you've been holding Khalid Sheikh Mohammed for seven and a half years. They admittedly tortured his family. He confessed to bombing buildings that weren't built till three years after he was incarcerated. He might as well have confessed to sinking the Lusitania or killing Lincoln uh, or sacri you know, or crucifying Jesus. Or I mean, this is insane baloney. And... So they say, we support the Constitution by having the Patriot Act. But see, the name of the Patriot Act is that way. It's a total deception. I'm going to go out to break with about four minutes of uh, Nigel Farage. MEP Farage apologizes to bank clerks, but he didn't really do that. He, he's refusing to back down. UK Independence Party member, European Parliament, Nigel Farage has refused to back down over comments he directed towards EU chief and global governance proponent Herman von Rupi. He did apologize for one of the countries he called a non-state. During a speech in front of the EU Parliament last week, in response to calls to apologize for saying Herman von Rupi had the charisma of a damp rag and the appearance of a low-grade bank clerk, Farage announced that he would apologize, but only to bank clerks the world over. <laughs> so he didn't really apologize, uh, as he promised to do. So we commend him. Never a flip-flop out of this guy. Uh, let's go to Nigel Farage, video and audio and a press conference. And then out of the break, we'll try to take a few more calls, hit a few more news stories. Stay with us. Good. Well, I've been for a meeting with the President of the Parliament. Um, I think it's what's described generally as an interview without uh, We had a fairly frank discussion. He and I debated what freedom of speech means. And we both agree that freedom of speech is very important. But we have different definitions of what freedom of speech is. My interpretation of freedom of speech is that the limits upon it are that you cannot incite violence, but that it is perfectly fair to criticize other people, and especially to do so in a parliament. Um, that is not uh, President Buzek's interpretation of free speech, and he says uh, that I've undermined the dignity of the parliament. Um, I responded to that by making clear that even in their own Charter of Fundamental Rights, which has just been approved as part of the Lisbon Treaty, Article 11 says that people should be able to speak freely without any institutions stopping them from doing so. We reached an impasse. The upshot of it is this. I've been asked to apologise to Herman Van Rompuy. I've been asked to apologise to the European Parliament. And I've been asked to apologise to the people of Belgium. And I've had time to reflect, a short period of time to reflect, and I've decided that I will make an apology. Um, but the only people I'm going to apologise to are bank clerks the world over. And if I've offended them, I'm very sorry indeed, uh, but I'm not going to apologise to Herman Van Rompuy. I'm not going to apologise to the European Parliament. I'm certainly not going to apologise to the people of Belgium. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, the President has said that he won't let this sort of thing happen again. What a democratic institution this is, isn't it? He won't let it happen again, and he will let me know shortly uh, what my penalty will be. So I am assuming that he will suspend me for a period of time from the Parliament. Uh, I am assuming that he will try, through the Conference of Presidents, uh, to get my position as leader of the group in the Parliament taken away. Uh, and all I can say is that those of us that have battled against the European institutions on the basis that uh, they were becoming fundamentally undemocratic have been proved to be right. I have not used unparliamentary language. I have not incited dislike or hatred. I have merely expressed an opinion. And in doing so, there is now actually a debate about who is Herman Van Rompuy, why is he being paid more than Obama, um, and just what powers has he got. And I'm not going to apologise if what I've said sparks the debate off right throughout the European Union about these institutions. But you insulted him. I don't think that's insulting. I mean, compared with the sort of insult that I've had in this Parliament from the leaders of the other groups, um, I don't think that the, the, the two compare. And, and frankly, you know, what Mr. Van Rompuy wants to do is to take away from us our democracy and our rights of self-government. You can't do that uh, without us as elected members coming back and saying we're not very happy about it. Was it that you say that I was personally um, insulting someone without saying and describing him as a dead 
Well, I think you have the charisma of Dan Bragg, and, 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 I, and I, I, I challenge you to find anybody who listened to that speech in the European Parliament. While many people might agree with the sentiment of what you were saying, wasn't the tone... I mean, you started off by saying, I don't mean to be rude, and then went on to be fantastic. No, I wasn't quite fantastic. You could, okay. If you compare... Uh, that audio is a little little bad for radio and TV, but you can watch the whole whole press conference. It gets better uh, towards the end. Let's go ahead and jam in another call right now. Let's talk to Rick in Florida. Rick, you're on the air. Good afternoon, Alex. Um, are you aware that it's been a year since you've posted anything new to your audio blog? Because I used to really enjoy listening to that. And, uh, you know, outside your thoughts outside of the constraints of the radio business. And it's been a year. You know, you know, I didn't you know. Time flies. I, I do intend to do the radio blog. I've just got to come give it to somebody and have them upload it. And then I'm like, I'm doing uh, international TV today, radio tomorrow. And then I'm so busy. I, I, sometimes late at night, I do want to say something. I, I do remember. I do need to remember to take the audio recorders home and uh, do the do the audio blog. That's a good idea. Anything else? I appreciate the call, Rick. We're going to come back and jam in Pete, Vinny, and Nick here at the end of the show. Deborah Medina, folks, it's your chance to vote for her in Texas. But regardless if she wins or loses, it's already the, the great showing she made. shows the grassroots support for someone who wants property rights and the Second Amendment. And that's enough of a reason to vote for her right there. We'll be right back. We'll find out what happens tomorrow. Stay with us.